don't ask a question. Yeah, I think so. They they have fun. Like chemists have a lot of fun trying to blow everything up. Oh, I think a chemist studies um, science. I think a chemist could uh, look at plants and bring more plant potential to life. Okay, so uh, what do you think a chemist does? Works. Works. <laughs> <laughs> this is true, we do work. <laughs> if you want money in your coffee, if you want secrets in your tea, Keep your paper hot. More envi environmentally friendly. Well, they have to stop using chemicals, <laughs> right? If they stop using chemicals, I mean, that's like the worst thing for the environment. I think it could be made more environmentally friendly just by creating compounds or using compounds that are biodegradable or that don't damage, um, you know, naturally occurring compounds or naturally occurring elements. Yeah. Uh, no. Not really, but I can imagine what it is. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. So. Green chemistry. I guess lawn chemicals and stuff like that. <laughs> well, it's anything that's better for the environment, right? Better for our future and a better place for our kids. Yeah. And if you think it's your turn to ask a question, it's not. McGill really is a unique place to do chemistry that's supposed to be green, greener and cleaner, the so-called green chemistry. Um, my name is CJ Lee, a professor of chemistry at McGill University, also the director of the Anzac Crate. My name is uh, Steve McGuire, and I'm a professor of strategy and organization in the Deshotel Faculty of Management, and I'm also director of the Marcel Deshotel Institute for Integrated Management. So my name is Audrey Morris. I'm a professor here in chemistry at McGill. And um, my name is Tomislav, Tomislav Ryszczyk, and I'm an assistant professor in chemistry at McGill. First, first of all, the green camp is a relatively new field, and the, the great thing about the working in the new field is there are so many uh, new discoveries you can make. So there's a lot of uh, exciting things you can encounter. You have more opportunity to, to discover new things. classical chemistry really is very much based on uh, attempts to get chemical products and materials quickly um, without really much uh, concern about what are the byproducts without much concern about how uh, toxic the starting materials may be um, also very often when chemists traditionally do chemical reactions um, especially in the laboratory on a on a, on, a, on a small scale, they're not really concerned with energy inputs. So, but we need to find a way to make our products from the most basic raw materials and find ways to transform these raw materials into something useful using minimum uh, aggressive reagents, using minimum energy. One thing that we've been doing is to try to use magnetic nanoparticles as catalysts so what they do is they improve the process so that this process will require less energy uh, less starting material will produce less waste in general and what we do is we also use particles that are magnetic so it's pretty cool because uh, the fact that they're magnetic is helping out with their recycling so we can take those little additives put them in the process the process will work faster better greener and at the end of the process we can recycle those particles So, basically um, this solution here contains particles of iron so it's very very tiny pieces of iron that are in water at the moment if I apply here a very strong magnet you can see here 
that all the particles have gathered on one end, attracted by the magnet. So I can now take this solution and extract the product I want, and I can reuse my particles here to make a new reaction. So recently, what we did with these particles is that we used them for a process that is involved for the synthesis, for instance, of ibuprofen, uh, this medicine that you all take, or margarine, it's another uh, product that uses this process. This process is called hydrogenation. And for this particular process, we used those particles and we demonstrated that they could be active to help make uh, hydrogenation. And this is really interesting because currently the technology relies on pricey and toxic metals, uh, typically palladium, platinum, nickel, that have to also be mined, whereas iron uh, is much more earth abundant. So it's a much more sustainable process. So we just discovered that and we're pretty excited about it. For green chemistry to be meaningful, uh, it has to be something that uh, non-chemists are invited to work on. So I think green chemistry will flourish uh, uh, once when it begins to kind of recognize itself as a, a multi-stakeholder, interdisciplinary undertaking. They, you know, as they were doing their work in the lab, they were always thinking in terms of, you know, making this, you know, the best molecule or the best um, process that it can be, but not so much what's going to happen to it afterwards. And I think that's the real value of these interdisciplinary initiatives. A scientist in the lab can come up with the best molecule or the best process, but if there isn't um, capability of taking that into the real world and making an impact with it, so either being able to sell it, um, being able to bring financing behind it, being able to lobby government and policy makers in terms of, of promoting this idea, because that's really what makes change happen and that's what makes a difference in the world. And so I think, you know, when scientists work together with, um, you know, people who shape policy, people who manage the organizations in our society, that's really where we can make change happen. And that is the goal, I think, for most green chemists and for most people who are working as managers or studying to become managers. So in theory, any substance which has a hazard associated with it is a potential target for a green chemistry uh, replacement. Uh, and that, that's radical because the traditional approach to risk management around chemicals uh, has been to focus on reducing exposure rather than reducing hazard. Any bench scale chemistry that um, r eliminates, you know, forget reduce, completely eliminates uh, hazardous substances, but which is never implemented commercially, which is never scaled up, which doesn't displace any incumbent hazard producing chemistry, is not having any true impact. I mean, it might be interesting scientifically. Uh, but if green chemists are serious about greening the chemical enterprise, then they should be uh, much more uh, concerned with the eventual commercialization of their technologies. My favorite part of working in the lab is the uh, finding new things all the time. Where uh, it's like, as I mentioned, like playing uh, a Lego, where you can the the building 
parts the same, but when you then you put them together in a different way, you can create new scenes. And it's, in a way, it's like uh, you discover totally new scenes where you have never seen before. The first time you see it, you feel very excited about it. Uh, the favorite part of my job is uh, working with uh, brilliant, uh, very talented people in other disciplines who are willing and to reach out across disciplinary boundaries and actually have interdisciplinary conversations at least, uh, if, if not, you know, launch full-fledged interdisciplinary research projects. I'm really inspired to do this, uh, for one hand, because this is a way that one can feel that you're doing something for the society, uh, leaving a mark on the actual technologies that we are using, uh, but it also is related to my honest love towards chemistry. I think chemists are in an amazing position as a profession that since they are being trained in, in schools, in, 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 in the undergrad level and, and beyond that, they are uh, given the ability to change matter, to do chemical reactions, to transform things. And really at the bottom of my interest in chemistry is this ability to transform materials, to create things. It is the creative side of chemistry that uh, for me is terribly important. I think the biggest challenge for chemistry in general is that uh, people will accept to talk about chemistry and to understand what chemistry is. I think our biggest challenge is actually a communication one, to go to the public and explain, you know, what are the challenges out there, and and to, I guess, to make the, to to take people on board with us and and take decisions with us because I think that. Um, when we talk about um, energy, when we talk about mining more fossil fuels or finding alternatives uh, and funding the technologies to provide alternative, all these things have very critical impact on people and also on uh, state budgets. We have to realize that. So uh, I, I think as a chemist, um, there are many scientific challenges, but maybe the number one s challenge would not be scientific. It would be to talk to the public and convince them that they should be interested in those problems because it's the part of their future. Hopeless sinners who has hurt on